Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every week. We talk comic book movies, comics, movies, TV, anything related to pop culture, all the fun stuff, you know, the, the stuff that you guys want to talk about. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Mike Dolce, with my glorious co-host, Hassan Godwin. Lord of the radio. Oh, that's right. Are we, are we still doing that? <laughs> what is, that, is the matter? Is that still a thing? Yeah, all right. Yeah, didn't I just... So, didn't we, we just talked about that in the... <sighs> About what licensing and stuff like that. We just we, we what was that TV? What was that TV show where they're like he was like trying to come up with his own nickname for a while, and then uh, and then all of a sudden like um, he's like oh, I want to be called this, and they're like no, and then he does something <laughs> and he screws something up, and they're like that's what you are, oh, and he's yeah, like no, that could, that could be anything. No, that could be any number of things. We got Dan T. Lawson joining us. Uh, we stream live on uh, TalkRadio.nyc. You can call in. Talk to uh, anyone here about the topics we're going to talk about, 877-480-4120. But we also stream on Facebook, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. And uh, we're on Periscope, at Michael underscore Dolce. You'll notice there is no backdrop if you're you're there, because uh, (laughs) this guy Uh locked his keys in his car. So, Randy Hogan, when you you do jump on, if you do jump on, you can't literally steal my car. Actually, I guess you literally could steal my car now. You could crash the window and steal the car if you had to, um, not not pleased about that. Uh, we got a great show though. Uh, we are going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff. Chris Brogan, New York Times best-selling author and superhero enthusiast, <laughs> is going to be um, joining us as well a little bit later. Um, he's he's actually reading a bunch of cool comics too that I didn't even hear of, so I feel kind of like intimidated yeah, we're now because I'm like, wow, that. if it's not from 1992, I'm not reading it. I guess <laughs> I feel like that's feel like that's kind of the deal with that. I'm not sure exactly. Don't be such a nostalgia bug. <laughs> but we're gonna uh, we're gonna start with uh, wait. Now you know to, to be honest with you, you you as, as we said before, you really don't want to be around there if you had to call AAA or or one of those guys. No, no. Because I mean, you, you look at how easily they get into your car. And sure. You, just never want to leave that car anywhere ever again. <laughs> I'm I'm content with the smell in my car is enough to drive anyway. Way it's like one of those things where if they like broke the window. See, Sam's laughing because he's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty bad. It's pretty bad in there. You would think so, but no. This is <laughs> this is Manhattan. Everything smells here. Well, no, so it's like that Seinfeld episode. See, going back to the '90s, you know, with the bad bo in the car, and, yes. and the guy yeah. like he, Jerry just like leaves in the keys, and he's like, go ahead, take it, just take it, and he gets in, he's like, ooh, I'm not gonna be able to do this uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh no i'm i'm pretty confident i'm pretty confident that that car is not going anywhere um, <laughs> really am well yeah can they see your keys in the car no they can't all right so then, nah, it'll be fine yeah they can't i mean it, it's just it's just really hey, you're, you're all right uh, yeah i mean i guess so i just you know what a stupid thing to do really it, ruined. it was going really good it happens Dan- I, went, I went to a show once uh a friend of mine was playing music and i i went to go see it and i locked the keys in the car across the street oh did you, go I, see, did you see the show and then i come saw out? the show but it's i was move. i spent the entire show thinking about this stupid keys in the car and i'm not going to be able to go home i could see why that's a problem yeah i, I call, could see why that would be these, mentally yeah that was that was ruined everything i called these jerks like an hour and a half ago where are they you know what if i was in trouble and, you know they would be like well if you were in trouble you wouldn't unlock your He's in the car. You know, if you want to no, live. No, 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 no. If you wanted well, to, you live, wanted to live, <laughs> you wouldn't have locked your Well, that's, this is my stupid car, though. See, this is the thing. It, it literally, for some reason, just locked on me yeah, for no don't. reason. And this happened, like, repeatedly. So I guess I am kind your of stupid. Your car doesn't like you. Your yeah. car is, it, something's wrong. It needs an oil change or some kind of tune-up, and then you just haven't done it because you have been uh, negligent. I and just did the oil change. This is killing me. All right, then you maybe they, no maybe they messed it up. Maybe no, they should come down and bring Your car doesn't like the oil. It wants yeah. a special kind of oil. <laughs> maybe it just doesn't like me. Maybe <laughs> even the, maybe the car at this point is like, you know what? Enough yeah. is enough. <laughs> enough, Mike. enough with you. Enough Sell is me. enough. Do you have you smelled the inside of me? <laughs> it's not this good. is all your fault. This is just not good. All right, yeah, I get you. We want to uh, welcome uh, James. Qu- oh, boy, I'm going to mess your name. Corandango. Corandango. That's good. <laughs> Dante Lawson. I might know that guy. A spot of Primera Stark. Elizabeth McKee. We got a whole bunch of folks on Facebook. Nice. Thank you for joining Hello, us, everyone. Uh, I'm sure if you're watching this show that you watch the Oscars. Um, I actually, mm-hmm. I you know, it's funny. I caught the rerun because uh, it was I on. <laughs> it was on. It was on all day. Uh, it was on all day the next day, talking about the blunder at the end. Uh, that those guys got canned. Is astonishing. Those guys got That's canned. An astonishing blunder. I, I said, um, I, I told another friend of mine that uh, I, years ago I kind of stole these two uh, these two DVDs from uh-huh. Best Buy mm-hmm. because. Um, and they were, you know, there were seasons. I forget what show, maybe 
uh, Carnival. Sure. They were Carnival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So uh, there's a whole season. This is, this is, yeah, yeah, let's, we'll yeah, get into that. Yeah. But um, Maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Uh, we got stuff to do. But uh, back in, I don't know, 04, 03, yeah. those, those seasons were like 80 bucks a Oh, pop. yeah, 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 yeah. So they were on sale from Christmas or whatever. They, they, they marked them down. Were they, in, were they in like the uh, unwatchable rack? You know, yeah. it's like here's a bunch of unwatchable DVDs. Yeah. We will pay you. To they didn't take even them home. have them then. Yeah. You know, because everything was so hip. DVDs were so that hip. That show Remember? was such a big disappointment. Oh. oh. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Wait. Remember, Best Buy had a big, big movie selection. It was yeah. like it was monstrous. You know, not not the way it is now. But anyway, uh, never mind. So they had marked them down about twenty five dollars. Sure. The sale ended. Christmas had ended three weeks ago. Okay. I wander around. I see one of them. I see both of them there for twenty five dollars. Even yeah. though they were they're they're more. So I I bought one, and uh, the clerk's like, this is this is this is eighty bucks, and I'm like, well, the price tag says twenty five dollars, man. <laughs> I'll take this back if I gotta, but I'm just saying you got to do something about that. So he sold it to me for twenty five dollars. Okay, that's how it was. So got it, whatever it's sticker. Hey, yeah, that's so that, that's his it. problem, not yours. Now, now the shady thing I did was I came back the next day for the second season. <laughs> and you stole everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just robbed them. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> You're like, I held them at gunpoint. Yeah, I'm rich, no. Biagi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that eighty dollars allowed me to buy this gun, right? And I'm taking the rest of these, right? Exactly. Um, no, so I bought another one. I took, sure. I, so now what I'm saying, and I, the the analogy I'm making is, uh, they have a sight scene. Policy. Uh-huh. If that's what the that's what the price tag says. That's it. That's what we got to charge you. Okay? That's great. Why don't the Oscars have that? <laughs> <laughs> we hand you the Oscar by accident. You got an Oscar. How 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 do you come on stage and take the Oscar back while they're on stage giving their acceptance speeches? How does that work? How does that work? The guy, That's, the guy who ended up the producer of La La Land was very, very gracious. I would was, have literally been a, like, "Nah." He was nah. amazing. Yeah, he was more amazing. Yeah. than that movie. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. But and and to, to be honest with you, that's your career. Uh huh. That goes viral. You got to be gracious because <laughs> yes. there's, there's, the, the internet will do things. You can't to you be. That you can't, can't be imagine. smacking the producer from no, Moonlight. You can't. You know you can't, that. Yeah. You can't be kicking people in today's off stage. in today's racially charged yes. climate, especially if they're the all, all white movies. Yeah, you can't be seen kicking producer. Bunch of black guys yeah, off the the stage. producer for the all white movie who is white can't be beating up the all no. black producer. No. You know, the all the, black. The, sorry, the black movie producer. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, black yeah. and gay. That's you know, oh, that's, uh, is it gay too? They're all gay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, just, that's, yeah. yeah. Those that's guys, the, those those guys. That's had a the free Trump ride. versus Obama <laughs> throwdown <laughs> that we've all whole, been waiting for. It's the whole thing. So yes, if I were him, no, you can't do that. If I'm me watching it, I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> I'm just waiting to watch. Well, you're at home watching things. You're waiting for just about anything to yeah, happen. Pretty you're waiting much. for chandeliers to fall. You're waiting. <laughs> you're waiting for you know. I'm like, waiting for Warren Beatty to do a drop kick yeah, right which, on the right which on the he producer. Should have. He should have drop kick fade down away. Oh, easily. She yeah. really. She sandbagged him. Yeah. Like, but I don't know what the deal with that was. I mean, how do here's you, the deal? How do you the, open the car? The deal and was just decide, there eh. are two letters. There mm-hmm. are two envelopes because I guess they don't know which side the people are coming out on. Uh, I, I guess they do it as a contingency in case the actor. Or the actor, you know, comes out on one side. Uh, they they get you know they hand them the uh, uh, okay. you know the, the envelope and this way in case they something have happens it. to the other actor on the <laughs> other side of the stage right or right? the other accountant. I mean, look, they're looking out for everybody. You know, <laughs> if, if that other accountant drops dead and the envelope goes flying into the orchestra row, you know. Got to have a backup envelope. What, what kind of how how perilous is it to go from backstage to the podium? It's to not say, easy. Hey, that's just not easy. This dude, one when I did come it, get no. your statue. <laughs> when you, yeah. That, that yes. time, that, yeah, when, that time on uh, the Oscars when I was there. And you won an Oscar for EGO. It was, my, it was uh, Mike from <laughs> Mike from New York <laughs> coming off the coming off the bus. Um, but yeah, so that's what ended up happening. Got the wrong letter. Um, but Warren Beatty was kind of like. You know, for Warren an actor, Brady bailed. He, you know, he was like, "Nah, I don't no, know." No, what's no, but going you know, on. I'm kind of like, I just, you know, it's too bad. Like, he didn't have like Will Ferrell or something, because Will Ferrell could like improv when he's up there. You yeah, know? like all those improving actors, like you know, yeah. would have been would would have been able to do something. School. He's yeah, like, I'm not yeah. doing. It. I'm not being paid no. to do that, so I'm not. Yeah, doing it. exactly. So, um, all right, so you know, obviously, we had the ending, which was which was cool. Uh, for us, terrible for them. But that's um, astonishing. I don't understand how you. I don't. I don't get how you don't do a PR thing and just you know just deal with it backstage, and then 
let them come back after the commercial break mm-hmm. and kind of accept their award yeah. and then have someone else explain it instead of embarrassing yeah. a group of actors on stage yes. while they're holding their, their trophies. Well, actually, with that Giving their would that have, speeches. Well, but that's the thing, though. See, they have to stop it there because that's the whole point of these shows is to give your ex- acceptance speech. Whoa. They, you know, so you're basically, you would be rotten. See, now, that, now we're talking controversy. <laughs> the all white movie with film producer um, <laughs> gets to give the acceptance speech for the award he didn't win <laughs> over the black produced they movie let with, the, the, uh, they let with the, the black and apparently gay. Come on <laughs> right after the commercial break. I'm just gonna and put the. Just, I'm just gonna put the camera on Hassan. Just, he is allowed they, to say the blacks. They they let the blacks. <laughs> He's allowed to say that appear, and then they go, "Hey, if I say it's good it, to be black," well, the and good, then they take the award. Here's the good part about our show being, you know, not very successful. <laughs> I could honestly say anything, and there's no controversy. Not now yet. we need to get more successful to the point where if we say it, we, yeah, we then, actually start then, talking, then you'll have to get another co-host and everything. Why uh, would I get another co-host? Huh? Because well, it's got to be that? completely generic, right? You can't have me sitting here going. Oh, you're saying that you're the reason blacks? we're not successful, then? Uh yes. Oh, yes. Sam, what was I thinking? This I don't have time? enough time being Lord of the Radio to help your <laughs> small <laughs> oh, operation clearly. be the biggest thing it should be. Clearly, clearly, yeah, that's Walmart. We're getting a lot of feedback on the uh, the keys. I can imagine Jersey Jedi. I asked if I was coming off the bus because my, you know, because the keys are in the car. No, the uh, <laughs> no, he got here with the car, and then then he decided to leave it for whoever's wandering. James Corin Dango just said, "You're black." <laughs> I didn't jokes know. on him. Here's the funny thing: I don't see things in terms of oh, color. So to color. me, Hassan, <laughs> you don't see color. You know, I Sam is as line. black as Hassan is. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Sam, yeah. <laughs> Everybody Sam, from the Bronx Sam is Leibowitz. Black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's from the Bronx. He's black enough. <laughs> oh God, our show's gonna get shut yeah, down. Yeah, that's all right. That's so one of the uh, one I of the other cool things. It. One of the other cool things, though, about the Oscars. Here we go with this 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 conundrum. It's a conundrum, right? It's a conundrum. It is now, and I'm glad you phrased it that way. That's a <laughs> great way to phrase it. The Oscar-winning Suicide Squad yep. film. See, the thing is, DC will not be put in a corner. No matter what you, it's 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 sort of it's it's sort of like their baby from B- Dirty you know? Dancing. No matter no Nobody matter what DC you say, no, no matter what you say about it, it's just going to keep coming back. It's going to keep coming back. It's going to thrive. It's going to thrive. It shouldn't. <laughs> it honestly shouldn't because it's it's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. Well, that's the funny argument too. Is Obviously, it's not a good move, but you not don't. A good move. But I threw up some promos, and we had some good fan reactions. I threw reaction. up in my mouth when That's I. That's true. I we had some good fan <laughs> reactions. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Uh, we'll discuss that, and we'll also talk about. But it's 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 legit now. It's in the pantheon. It's the first comic book movie. I Is think, it to win a? Oh, I think so boy. to win an Academy Award. All right, we're gonna we're gonna ask our intern to uh, yeah, our crack our crack intern yeah, who staff haunts me from to uh, from the annals. To look this up, the is studio. Suicide Squad, and we'll ask the folks out there, is Suicide Squad the first comic book? This is the amount of research we do. Um, yeah, we don't do any. No, research. clearly not. No. Is it the we first? We ask you questions. That's what and, we're here uh, for. And is it a good movie? And But more importantly, too, we're going to segue into more DC stuff. Um, there's a Nightwing movie coming. Uh, yeah. Is that a good idea? No. Is that a good idea? No. All right, when we, we come back. We ruined it. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And And welcome welcome to to 21st Century Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. For you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business. And your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day.
welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. Oh, there we go. A spot of Premier Stark came in. That's good. He said Superman was the first. So if you're just joining us, we were we were stupidly. Yeah, I just got um, a text from from one of my friends. Okay, very good. angrily saying do research. Before yes, you do the show. clearly because so. we're we're really brain dead that it, it's uh, first of all not only is it not the first. Um, our crack intern Patrick. We don't have to keep going over down. this. No, no, no. We, we no. We I like we doing don't, this. No, we don't. I have like to. I like doing. I like pointing out the <laughs> stupidity of us because not only is it not the first because clearly Superman. Won it for something I back know. in the day, I but Heath Ledger it. won it for free. So even he if won Superman it after wasn't, he died. Well, that's why he won. He was it. dead. But either way, he was the first win, the first victory for that. So he was dead. You know, it's not real. Pretty good stuff. All right, <laughs> uh, we're gonna skip ahead here because we have our we have our uh, a caller in as well too, um, and uh, he's a busy man. So I want to get him on and uh, talking about this, Mr. Chris Brogan. How you doing? I'm the best in the world. How are you, gentlemen? That's good. Best in the world. That's fantastic. See, now, Hassan, my co-host, is Lord of the Radio. I am the Lord of the Chris Radio. Chris Brogan, the best in the world. He's the best in the world. He's got me beat. I think so. Because I want to be the best in the world. I think so, I hear definitely. that title, and I want to aspire to it. What did you think of the Oscars, Chris? Oh, you know what? I, I thought they were terrible. Oh, I mean, they were really good. <laughs> I had the wrong envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. That was very that was very clever. Uh, so, Chris, you are the CEO of Owner Media Group. Tell us what that is uh, and, and tell our fans out there what you do. Oh, sure. Well, it's uh, pretty much zero comic related, although I did write a book called It's Not About the Tights Once. Um, oh, there you it's go. It's a project where I help people in business trying to figure out how to make their business work better for them. So we do courses and webinars to help people of all different size businesses do it better than what they were doing before. And have you worked with any creative folks who are in a creative business because i mean it, it, it you know the funny thing about uh you know, everyone says oh it's not it's not comic book related or this or that but you know comic book artists producers actors writers they're all entrepreneurs i mean they're they're yeah you know i mean so so have you worked with many creative folks before at all or, or is that something that you i've worked with and i'm friends with lots of people who are uh crisscrossing this space so i mean uh, a lot of musicians a lot of graphic types people uh, a lot of arts people we uh, a lot of authors, just crap tons of authors, and you know, if the world were what it was, then everyone who ever wanted to write a Lobster Johnson story could jump in and just go for it. But it's not the world we live in, so I try to help people uh, in any particular platform figure that out. But yeah, I mean, what makes it sort of applicable is that basically we can kind of make our own game these days. I mean, you you wouldn't see a comic book radio show even yep. just a handful of years ago, and suddenly, like, this is the world we live in. So I think it's just, there's so many opportunities, so many ways we can work with it. Ours is clearly the best, though, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who would think, you know, there's no other choice. Was there another choice to this? No, no. You only get one envelope when you're on our show. He's good. He's really good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, what did you think? Uh, let, let's do this, actually, because we got a couple We got a couple things. We're going to play a fun game with you, too. We're going to try out, we're, we're trying out all kinds of things with you, which is great. Um, what is the... What did you think about the Suicide Squad winning uh, the makeup, you know, best makeup or whatever? And was it, I mean, did you like the movie at all? Because this, well, this is the first debate that we're having. Was that a good movie or not? Because uh, many people uh, are on either ways. It, you know, uh, it, it's I, it, a lot of years ago when, like, the first set of Superman superhero movies were coming out, I would have been like, thank goodness, and how cool, and they use a weird group of people and all that. Yeah. But, you know, there's so much going on out there that to have one kind of dump like this, I, I, you know, there's so many things not great about it. The fact that the plot was circular, the fact that she hired the entire Suicide Squad to rescue her from her own person, that, you know, there's just all this garbage, the whole giant, you know, swirling garbage pit in the middle of the city problem that happens in everything from Ghostbusters on, you know, all those things are horrendous. The, you know, underutilized Diablo, the fact that the Lego Batman movie made a joke about Killer Croc saying, <laughs> I did something! <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, this is that's that's how bad this movie was. But there are things to like. I think Jared Leto is a swell joker. I, I think that I was really ready to not like Harley Quinn, and I thought she was great. So, she was you know, the best part. Fun in it. She was easily the best part of that movie, right? Truly. And, it, you know, it's funny you bring that up, too, because, um, you know, Lego Batman crushed it, absolutely crushed it at the, at, the, at the box office. We had a whole show on that as well, too. Is that, in your opinion, the best Batman movie? You know, it's so funny. I was just having a conversation just yesterday. I think so. And, I mean, I, I appreciated Christian Bale. I, there's a lot of the other Batman I didn't quite go for. Um, but I think it was the best because it just sort of covered such a span, and it allowed us to cover the stupid parts of Batman as well as the super dark parts of Batman. I think it covered it all. 
you just broke Hassan's heart. He just said, "No, no, it's not the best Batman." <laughs> That's it. You're off the. You're off the show. No, uh, no. <laughs> I'm off the show. You know, you, you talk about the fact that there's all this uh, stuff going out, and that's another topic that we talk about too. Um, when's enough enough? I mean, even I'm getting to the point where I'm not really looking forward to these movies as much as I should. Um, I mean, I, you know, this is this is stuff that you know we've been dreaming about since we were you know kids in the in the 80s and 90s, and now I'm kind of like, oh god, too another movie. I mean, do you do you feel the same sense out there? And do you think the the audience out there is going to hit a hit a point where just enough is enough. You know, I think we're almost there in a lot of ways. I mean, if you look at people, the reviews that are coming in already about the new Logan movie are like, wow, it's like a it's like a real grown up movie that sort of kind of has superheroes in it. You know, like that's how you know people are getting tired of it because we spent so many decades going, oh, we could pretend those guys were superheroes for a minute. Uh, and now we have so many heroes that we're like, you know, look in the other direction. I think that there's a glut. I think that there's a lot more junk product coming out. And I think that every time something new hits and works really well, we lose our minds and try something crazy to try to follow it up. So it does with a hard R rating and all that. So we go, oh, that's what we need, rated R. Um, and so then there's a bunch of that coming down the pike. And I don't think that's the way it's going to go. Now, are there plenty more really awesome stories in comic books that I'd love to see translated to screen? And especially once you start thinking about places that aren't the norm, like Vertigo titles or Dark Horse or some of that, I think there's lots more we could do. But I don't know. I'm not... I don't go to every movie because it's a comic book movie anymore. I just go to every other movie because it's a comic book movie. The the thing that I'm really excited about with the Logan movie coming out is it seems as if it's a movie rather than a superhero movie, rather than a comic book movie. It seems like it's very grounded. It's, it's, it's grounded in a, in a reality that you can kind of relate, except he's got claws and a healing factor, but that's not, you know, well, that's not, not really. the showy part of it. Well, I guess he's old man Logan at this point, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll get into that. But, you know, that seems to excite me more now than, you know, say, you know, the next Avengers movie that comes out, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the other thing, right? Like, so big set piece movies are getting less and less exciting to people. Yep. Uh, you know, what I wrote in my last big book that I wrote, which was The Freak Shell Inherit the Earth, I wrote all about the fact that I cannot believe that Guardians of the Galaxy is getting made into a movie. And that was before it came out. It was before sure. it did so well and everyone lost their mind. I just watched the newest trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. I loved the first Guardians movie. I saw that. It was There were so many like weird inside joke kind of feelings to it. Like, oh, we're going to go save the galaxy again? I guess we can charge more this time. <laughs> it made me feel depressed. I was it, like, yeah. Ugh, I'm, I'm going to watch this for setup jokes that we already know are coming because of the last movie. I feel, you know, I feel like the, the movie theater companies are the ones that are just, the, they're the ones that are kind of caught in the middle here, right? You can't make a, y- y- the small indie film doesn't work in theaters anymore because there's so much home entertainment, right? So you have to build, you have to make these big the spectacles. Small indie films don't work because the studios have decided they don't work. But they don't work because pe- cause people are not putting their money down. Uh, to go see them in theaters. They're going to wait for it to be on we DVD. We don't know that, though. I mean, they do so much. We uh, do, actually, because Paramount Pictures reported a loss of over $500 million boom. over the next year and a half. What's $500 million? <laughs> so, yeah, they're, like, they're losing hundreds of millions a year now I because they can't figure out yesterday. what we actually want to see in a movie theater. And at the same time, we got Netflix going, oh, you want Luke Cage? We'll make that. Just yep. wait an hour. Oh, yep. done. Now what do you want? That's another thing, too. The special effects on TV are so great now. I mean, I remember going back to like the Buffy days and Joss Whedon used to complain he's like you know we're spending two million dollars an episode just to make it at this quality and and that's why the you know the wb eventually uh said oh you know get us go to upn at the time because we can't afford your show anymore now a two million dollar budget on a show i mean gives you the same special effects you're getting in the netflix universe is the arrow universe is the green you know there's so much more options and the quality of television i mean look at game of thrones right mm. i mean it's it's unprecedented. So um, I, I feel bad. I feel bad that there's nothing that uh, theaters have to roll these big, big productions out in order for them to, to even succeed. But at the cost of us going, you know what? Ah, do I need to see Deadpool 2? <laughs> I don't know. You know? Um, talk to us um, about what you're reading these days because uh, you had mentioned you were reading some stuff on Comixology and, and I felt, uh, felt kind of dumb because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> oh, so if you get kind of a little sick of... Uh, you know, buying lots and lots of paper pulls and you don't really care. Like, I'm not a collector. Mm-hmm. Way, I'm always a yep. reader and I've always been Same a reader. Same here. Um, totally worth, you know, ruining the book. Um, 
so with with Comixology, it was a standalone company, and then Amazon bought it. And it's just one of those like online things where you can download comics. You know, there's Marvel Unlimited. There's lots of other things like that. Um, the kinds of comics that I've been reading, I've started looking around for not indie per se, like not the super smallest uh, ones, but I'm looking for some non cape and tights people just to see what's going on. And I'm trying to buy time because I'm trying to remember what the heck the name of this thing is. It starts with an A. Uh, but it's like a special ops type of thing. Uh, I'm also going back and reading stuff that I wanted to around the Secret Wars because I think that second version of the Secret Wars that came out where, you know, who were the squirrel amongst us and all that, I think that was one of the most interesting uh, shifts in comic books in a long time that really got us excited again to figure out who had secretly been a squirrel for all that time. Yeah, And I, I was kind of going back to relive some of that experience. But beyond that, um, I don't have any particular super favorites right now. I've just been sort of uh, sleeping around in comic <laughs> reading. <laughs> I can't top that with a question. So we're going we're gonna to do a fun little bit here with you on, and uh, it seems like you'd be a really good sport about this. We're going to play a game called Hero or Zero. You ready for this? We are going to go. Can you spot the real superhero? We're going to tell you a superhero name and description. Are you going to tell us if this is a real superhero or if it's just one that we uh, cleverly made up behind the scenes? Uh, the first one is the gay ghost. Hero or zero? The gay ghost. Oh, man. You know, that sounds like one of those ones that, like, Alec Ross painted from, like, you know, Dynamite Comics or something like that. I'm going to go with hero because I think you're teasing me. Bing! You are correct. <laughs> the gay ghost is a ghost who fights crime and is evidently super happy about it. He <laughs> appeared in the same comic as Wonder Woman and had a lot, of, had a lot in common with her. Uh, if you know yeah, what I mean. Or not really. <laughs> He's still the most fabulously dressed character in the whole series, right from the top of the page. Uh, <laughs> this is actually real stuff. Come this on, is you really gotta get great. through it. You gotta All right, it. number two, uh, we're going to go Neon the Unknown. Neon the Unknown. So funny because that sounds like a late 80s, around the time of long shot crappy comic that went out from Marvel or something. Like right around the time they had these things like Kickers, Inc. <laughs> um, uh, new Universe, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, nope, I'm going to go zero. Ah. It is a real Neon hero, the Neon unknown the Unknown, originally owned by Quality Comics and later bought by DC. Uh, he almost died of dehydration but drank from a magic oasis that gave him powers. Like um, you do. Oh, boy. <laughs> which, is what, which is what always happens. All right. We are going to go with the next one, Revolt. Revolt. <laughs> with a capital V. With, this is with a capital V. Heroes. This is a, with a capital V. So it's uh, Revolt. You know, these all, these all sound like heroes that should be um, in the League of Substitute Superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> I, the Legion of Substitute Heroes, I'm sorry. So, I mean, those used to be some of my favorite things in the world, like, you know, Otter Boy and all that kind of thing. Uh, Revolt <laughs> is a zero. Ah. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no. Ding, ding, ding. He is a zero. Hey. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Academy I got Awards. my, well, look, we got to actually have a, yeah, we did. I yeah. gave you the wrong envelope there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good job, Beatty. Yeah, we got to get actual sound effects. I think that's what we got to <laughs> yeah. do instead of me we'll just going into that. that. All right, and coming up next, The Wizer. Uh-huh. Not the wizard, the wizard. That is a real character, and I think he's a bad guy, wasn't he? Or is he like a speedster kind of guy? He's real. He is real. Bing, bing, bing. You are correct. We are three for four so far. All right. We are going to go with another one. We are going to say, oh, boy. This is actually a lot of research that we did, so we <laughs> got a lot to choose from. Uh, strikeout. A Oh, see, that hero. sounds like one of those crappy new universe characters, too. Uh, <laughs> strike out. Well, that was just an awful time. The only thing that they gave us, I think, was like long shot, which was good. Uh, strike out. I'm going to go with, I'm going to say hero. Ah, he is oh, a zero. Man. We made that up. Uh, we actually called it. See, now we're actually pitching new. We, we, we should get a publisher on here and we just pitch these. A superhero, a sports themed hero of the 1930s that tried to ride the ever increasing popularity of baseball. Right. That was what we. That's what we described yeah. him as. In case was that was well written, it was pretty good, right? It's not that bad at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Lady Fair Play. <laughs> nope, that one can't be because that's like what's his face, Tom Terrific or whatever. So no. Ah, that's a hero. 
Oh, <laughs> son of a gun. Progressive Publishers, 1941. We're trying to make things difficult. I don't like any softball questions here. No, apparently not. No, I like, no, I like, no. I like going in. All right, we're going <laughs> to wrap it up with one more. We're going to go with Radio Squad. I figured that's the most Radio, apropos one to wrap it up with. Radio Squad. Uh, you know, it sounds like one of those terrible team ones, like, you know, the spinoff of the spinoff of the spinoff of, like, a Jack Kirby group. So I'll go with it. It's, it's real. It's a hero. Bing, bing, bing. You are correct, <laughs> sir. It was an early offering by Siegel & Schuster, premiering in more fun comics. Wow. Number 20. We want to give uh, credit to uh, Peter Aiken, uh, one of our contributor, show contributors for doing this research and getting us this. Uh, Chris, I hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, tell the uh, audience out there where they can get your next book. You're, you're writing a 10th book, right? Yep, I'm working on a 10th book right now, and you can get it anywhere you buy books, but... You want to look up me a little bit more? Actually, just Google Chris, and I'm pretty likely to be one of the top five Chris's you'll find on your site. Chris that's, Brogan. That's actually pretty awesome. Yeah, you can go to chrisbrogan.com. You can find him on Twitter, slash Chris Brogan. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. So much fun. Thanks for having me on. You got it. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Nightwing movie and if that's really a good idea for DC to be doing right now. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. If you have an interest in marijuana, you want to know about marijuana, law, policy, and culture, then feel free to join me, Joseph A. Bondi, every Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning on my show, In the Know 420 on TalkingAlternative.com. Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire, comic book movie podcast. We're talking comics, movies, TV, all the back. fun stuff. It is. Uh, I want to thank Chris uh, for joining it and being a good sport about yeah, us awesome. trying. We like trying out our new bits uh, on our guests as well. Um, we're just talking off, uh, off stage, off camera, off, off, off offline, whatever you want to do. Yes. Uh, we didn't even break out the Adventures of Super Slave. <laughs> As one of them, so yeah, that would that would actually fit in nicely with the conversation we were having earlier. <laughs> yes, See how that works. Exactly. Uh, so, audience out there, is Super Slave a real? Is a hero or a? Well, I guess that's really racist of me to say zero, but is he a hero oh, or zero? I think if he's a super slave, that he's. He's a zero. <laughs> if you're super and you're still a slave, then you this got no self-esteem. This is very true, right? Right. Yeah. Then he's just kind of like a like Helsinki syndrome. Yeah, at that exactly. Point, right. He's that, like, well, that, I could escape at any point, but I kind of like you guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, get that guy out of here. Like, forget the plight of my entire race. Can't you fly back to Africa? <laughs> I mean, what's going on? I'm gonna get one, that guy. Once out again, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna flash over here. That he yes. Is. Sounds allowed to say that. <laughs> Sounds allowed to say that. And when we I become, am the, I am the when we become successful, yes, don't you that's remember right. on the well, recently dark you know, night? Hey, you know, some people they don't they don't always catch our show. They don't go on SoundCloud.com slash Secrets of the Sire and listen to it. They don't go on iTunes dot com and and look up Secrets of the Sire. That's their fault. S I R E. They need slacking. You know, <laughs> they don't all do that. They don't go to our Patreon page where we have our super patrons uh, who we we love and adore, including. Uh, Omar Morales, Einar Peterson, Matt Byer, John Hoff III, Ashley Haikai, uh, our program director, Stephanie Dolce, our executive producer, Steve Ovecki, and Brian Phillips, and our Uber fan, Christina Dolce. 
See how that? See how that? Well done. You do that, that well every that week. Yeah, I'm I try that every time. You uh, do it. Call in because if you want to play Hero or Zero, we actually have a whole bunch left over. Eight seven seven four eight zero four one two zero. We will take phone calls right now and play Hero or Zero if you call in. So uh, that's that's for all of our listeners out there who catch us live. Uh, if you catch us on the podcast, uh, yeah, don't do that. No, no, call, call in. Call. You call can call, but you're not call gonna, in. Yeah, you're call gonna, in. Don't you're stop. Talk anybody. to a whole another podcast don't when you call it. <laughs> All right, so we were kind of talking about the Suicide Squad movie and how it's now the Oscar-winning Suicide Squad movie, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't really don't underestimate it, man. It doesn't make things great for DC, but one of the other things how does that not make things great for DC if they win an Academy Award for one of their movies? Okay, or sorry, it's it's putting like spit on, you know, it's like. Was it lipstick on a pig? You know, that kind of thing. They don't think so, because the pig is their oh, product. Of course not. They so, don't think so. But it yeah. doesn't mean that, that all of a sudden people are going to sit there and go like, wow, Suicide Squad's really a great movie. i got to go see this movie right now. i got to go buy this on DVD and own it and Maybe. parade it around. Maybe. It does, you know, it just, how, can it, how can it be bad? No, it's not bad. It's never bad. It's just, it's, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, you're, just, you're just mean to DC. That's I am. It is. No, I am. I am definitely. They owe you money. No, they don't owe me any money. Yeah, they owe you a lot Yet. of money. Come on, admit it. Yet. <laughs> yeah. It's actually true. That it is kind he of is funny. wearing a Marvel I, shirt. I am wearing a Marvel That's shirt today. Not, yeah, all right. See? That explains your bias. All right. So Warner Brothers <laughs> is plotting a live-action Nightwing movie with Lego Batman movie director. I mean, how great could that be, right? That's got to be something good. Uh, Chris McKay will helm a film based on the DC character Dick Grayson, best known as a member of the Batman family. Um, Chris McKay, who most recently directed the Lego Batman movie, is in negotiations to Helmet. He's the bee's knees now, And man. Bill... He's the answer to all well, yeah. questions. Well, he's because... going to enter a whole different realm. Uh, we had Jeff Gomez on here a few weeks ago, and he yes, was he saying did. how the animated movies work because it's such a closed room. Right. Uh, and then once you get into the into the yeah, live-action higher... space, it's... Yeah, like, so... which, what's his name? Uh, learned from the... the... Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man movies. What's his name? Webb? Oh, yeah. And yeah. he, 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 he kind of came out of uh, obscurity and sure. realized, no, this is not as easy as Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. Uh, so Bill Dubuque, the accountant, is writing the script. Not the accountant that, that messed up the Oscars, though. No, the no. The actual Ben Affleck That guy is, ben is in landfill somewhere. Um, so killed by Warren Beatty. <laughs> you kind of had so I, we you know we talked before the show, so we do do some research here, which is good. Or we well, we talk other, to each other. That, that, that's, that's, I count that's research. That. that is research. That's like a tax <laughs> yeah. write off right there. Yeah. Okay, um, and you and you had an interesting reaction to it when you first saw it. The idea of Nightwing, yeah, of, the, of Nightwing. Um, it's uh, it's it's not necessarily the the words I'm about to use are not necessarily mine. I totally agree with it. The, mm-hmm. the words I use was that's a bad idea and that doesn't see. But someone else uh, I know said it, it was desperate. Ah, yeah, it seemed very desperate. And uh, there were there really no were no plans for Nightwing up until now. Mm-hmm. And so this guy does a, a halfway decent uh, Warner Brothers movie. Yeah, Warner Brothers affiliated movie. And uh, they they just scramble and say we got to get them part of this universe, and it just kind of goes to show that there's not a lot of planning. There's no planning back there. there. There's no planning. That's like actually a, a terrific segue because you know last week we debated about you know who's going to direct Batman because Matt Reeves now it fell through. Right. But apparently after a pretty rocky period. Um, <laughs> for the DC Extended Universe, the studio has seemingly gotten things back on track. Yeah. After Meaning they a, threw in a sixth garbage bag full of money. Well, him. no, they didn't just do that. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is what uh, MovieWeb.com is reporting. After a will-he-won't-he he negotiation progr- uh, process, Matt Reeves officially signed on to direct The Batman. At one point, negotiations totally broke down, and it looked like Warner Brothers wasn't going to be able to get the Cloverfield... I didn't realize he directed Cloverfield. How about that? that and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes filmmaker to sign on the dotted line, but they also ultimately got the deal done what changed according to a new report warner brothers gave matt reeves a ton of creative control ah, that's kind that's of desperation again that's definitely desperation but i also think it's one of those uh, buyer beware kind of things i feel like they're gonna be like no 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 you could totally do you do whatever you want you could it's this is this is warner brothers we're the home for you do whatever you want by the way, Deadpool was really successful, so could yeah, so you change the tone you of your do, entire movie? Yeah, make what you want to do more like that. But no, 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 do what Less you want. Less like what, do what you, you want, want and more like that. Do what that. you want, just what you want. It, you know, it, it shouldn't be so dark because, you know, Batman v Superman was kind of dark and it didn't really pay off. So, so. so to the audience out there, who was it? The who directed the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck? With, with oh, Baff- it was that guy. Baff- oh, Baff- God, that guy was terrible. The Daredevil movie with Ben the, Affleck. Yes. It was Mark Stephen Johnson. 
Mark Stevens. Okay. And he got to do Ghost Rider, too. He got a second movie. Yeah, but it was studio interference that made uh, Daredevil as bad as it was. I mean, that it don't, was... That don't it explain Ghost Rider, though. It, no, no, no. no. <laughs> we're not talking about Ghost Rider. Sure, sure, sure. We're, we, we're going to be smart and not talk no, I'm about questioning, Ghost Rider. I'm questioning how good the director might be, but Listen, yeah, go ahead. the movie was going to be terrible anyway, sure. but it was more terrible. It was, it, was, it, was, it was actually rendered less of a product, less of a viable uh-huh. product by all the tinkering and tampering sure. that the studio had done. I heard tinkering is great. Did, well... You know, Creators you know, love that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Spider Primera Stark says... Uh, was it Green Lantern was worse? I'm course, assuming. I'm assuming Green. No, I'm assuming no, GR. we're not going to compare. We're not. We're not comparing because yeah. because there are way worse. There's, there's way better, but there's way worse. Okay. What I'm saying, basically, what I'm saying is, the studio wanted it to be like Spider Man. Sure. Spider Man had come oh, out. Ghost Rider. Spider-Man like, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is worse. Ghost Rider was worse. Go ahead. Sorry. Of course, Ghost Rider I'm just, was I'm worse. I'm correcting for him. You know, I don't want him to think that he's not on the show. Well, he is. He is. <laughs> streaming through Periscope. Don't correct me to correct him. All right. I don't want to talk anymore. All right. So moving on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, yeah, they're, 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 all the studio tinkering made it as bad as it made it actually worse. So like what you're saying is that uh, uh, what's Reeves, his name? Deadpool. Matt. Oh, Deadpool, Deadpool yeah. came out. Oh, yeah. They no want, one they're going to want Nightwing, which is a brand new product, which no one has put their heart and soul mm-hmm. into. No one's done deep research or, or this is no one's pet project. Right, yeah. threw this at this guy so that he can get into the mainstream, yep. and so the D, so Warner Brothers can claim another you know star director sure. for their product, and uh, it's going to be a debacle, or it's going <laughs> to be the best movie that they put out. Well, I mean, early rumors are the Wonder Woman movie, which I have such high hopes for, mm, not going to not going to turn out as well. Uh, really? Because of because of screenings, right? You, yeah. the people have already yeah. come out of the screening saying it's it's not terrible, right? And everyone's everyone's reaction <sighs> is it's not that bad, really. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Enjoy if, it. That's okay if like you know, you're, not you're like, like the a, Logan people. That's like, okay oh if my like God. you're like a college student and you're like you're 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 walking away from like a second date with a woman and she's like, well, that wasn't terrible. Like yeah. I'll go on a third date yeah. with you. I'm like yeah. that wasn't that. Let's bad. do this again. You know, we can not you know, this Friday. You know, right? But soon, right? right. You know, yeah. you know, started out big, yeah. little, yeah. little ending, so almost a victory. but you know, not the worst ever. It's not exactly. the worst. Yeah, that's, that's never you, happened. You don't to me, really by the way, want that. I understand what you're talking about. Right, you've never been on a date with a woman. Oh, oh well you see done, right but that's not, oh, that's not, see, that's right true. The Lord of the Radio dates all the I'm dating <laughs> someone right now while we're on the On the radio? Yeah, that's how. Like literally right that's now. That's how awesome Are I you am. on a date right now? I am Is it on with a Patrick date the right intern? Now. Is he behind no, you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Wine and dine that guy. But she's hot as heck. <laughs> Wine and dine that guy. All right, when we come back, we will talk more about this. We'll talk more about Matt Reeves. And then we're going to finally get to an, a news item that I that I actually had on the agenda for two weeks now. That we haven't gotten to, and it's the mystery surrounding. I say we don't get to it. The mystery surrounding the next Star Wars has, oh, has been solved. Question, oh, oh, question mark? oh, can't wait. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. Oh, 
welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. I want to thank Chris Brogan for joining us earlier. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground here. We covered the fact that I have no banner behind me uh, because I locked my keys in the car because that's just stupidity on my part. But I blame the car. I, blame the- I was having such a great day, too. There's no question about it. It's like Stop nice out. reflecting. You're still having a great day. Well, it hasn't ended yet. Well, yeah, I guess it so. hasn't ended. This is just a setback. I guess so. You're going to be. It's going to come down. I know it's going to happen, though. Is my my no. dad? My dad, who's driving down here, oh. is going to get down. You're going to jinx him, and then he's going to open. He's going to like reach in with the spare key, which he got in my house, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's not going to work. Like the key is not going to work. I oh. feel like he got me really nervous. He's like, "Hey, this is the valet key." I'm like, "Yeah, that's all I have." And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, the last car I had was a Honda, and I'm thinking to myself. What if I never got the spare key? You should have told him to take every key he no, sees. No, that's it. There was a, it was a one key. It was well, all then we it had. has to be that one. Unless it's a key that I left from my old car. Oh, geez. Yeah. Come on, dude. See, this is, this, is what I'm, this is what I'm thinking. Why but, would you leave the key to your old car and not have the key to your new car and where to be found? I don't know. I'm sure it's going to work out. They're going to break into my car. <laughs> um, we also talked about as bad, a, as bad a night that I might be having. Not on the show. We're having a great time on the show. Um, not as bad as the Oscar folks. We, no. We, we definitely <laughs> no. covered that as well. It would be too. really difficult to have as bad a night as they had um and not as bad a year as i, I know from the money perspective but uh, from dc's perspective uh, you know probably they're they're not looking they're not looking as great uh as they as they leave them alone nah, i like i like picking they're, on them. i got the marvel got shirt a, on they've got an academy award this is a great year <laughs> yeah, for them that's right their academy award winning. <laughs> oh god it's killing it's, it's, it, actually, it actually hurts me they won the that. first academy award. technically warner brothers dc won the first academy award this is true man won it this so is true. this is their dominion Remember, DC was able this to make true. movies way before Marvel was. Very true as well. So back off. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, that 90s podcast on. Um, and uh, I, the name of the gentleman escapes me who runs it, but uh, he's going to be on. And nice. we are going to go through <laughs> the top comic book movies of the 90s. Of the 90s. Which is not a lot. It's no. actually very hard to, to figure that it's going to be a I lot. I know of, what mine is, though. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna say my favorite. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of a dark horse, but I'm gonna give it away as soon as as soon as we come, like to the to the uh, yeah. I'm station. not gonna I'm not gonna say either. No, I don't mean like I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be like wearing a shirt that represents oh, exactly. So you're not even gonna say it. So you're. Just I will gonna, say it eventually, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give. You're that. gonna rely I'm gonna, on I'm our technology gonna, to, to yes. convey it to the audience. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. For anyone listening on talkradio.nyc, they'll have to wait for I for, yeah. for me to say it. No. Yeah. It, if okay. you say it. You could be like oh, J.J. Well, Abrams say. and mystery box your whole way through the, through the show. <laughs> That's all time travel. And, time <laughs> yes. tra- and when I time travel, I will not lock my keys in the car. <laughs> See how that works? All right. This is a, a segment we call Spinning the Racks. I actually have some good music for this. So I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pump some sound effects. We're going to do a whole bunch. Of, I got, I got a, an impersonator coming on the show. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. He's going to do Christian Bale's Batman. It's going to be fantastic in the next couple weeks. Uh, the mystery surrounding the next Star Wars title may have just been solved. Hmm. In countries far, far away, a question about the next Star Wars title may have been answered, according to the Daily News. Um, the question we even had on the show was, was it The Last Jedi or The Last octopi jedi you know jedi plural what is it uh and it could have a clearer meaning now to the foreign language posters um the spanish one is los jedi there's a german one a french one it seems jedi is in fact plural uh hassan what is your reaction to that i have no reaction to that yeah no reaction no i don't really have a reaction to that now i think it's a uh, the one thing that's kind of no no (laughs) the one thing it made me thought of when I read this was <laughs> it made you thought of <laughs> one thing it made one thing it made me thought of think, think of? of but I thought it <laughs> so, uh, don't dwell on it keep moving <laughs> <laughs> me fail English that's impossible <laughs> um, it made me think oh, so gotcha yeah, it does it rolls off the tongue better yeah it's yeah, a little bit a little bit that's that English the next, language the for next you. movie's out in December 2017 yes it is like, yes, that's kind of crazy now right I mean that's kind of like insane a little bit. The fact it's, that now it's not a, the, the the insane thing is that we're in March already. Yeah, like New Year's just happened. Yeah, we're in March already. Yeah. So so I mean, before you blink, it'll be December. Yeah, and we'll be sitting there, and I'll be 
And then we'll be doing an after show and I'll be like, it sucked. Elizabeth McKee just <laughs> chimed in. A Star Wars movie a year really succeeds at making me not care about Star Wars. There's some, there was definitely something about the fact that so much time had passed between the original movies and the prequels mm-hmm. you know, to build up the anticipation. And then there's a lot that you know, built up after the prequels into Force Awakens. And you had the cartoon shows. You know, so you can get supplementary stuff. Right, but there's right. nothing like going to the movies and hearing yeah. you know, the John Williams soundtrack. The same thing. The same thing that stinked or stunk. <laughs> oh, so I did. I did. <laughs> Thank you, Brian Thank Everham you. said. My cat's breath smells like cat food. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ralph. Oh yeah, <laughs> that guy's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, the same thing that stinks about or or that stunk about of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! The same thing. The same thing about, that thought about about the uh, the old movies is the same thing that makes the new movies not as special. Yeah, is that you had to wait maybe three years for yeah. one, and now you you really don't. So yeah, I know, and it's kind of the same thing that happens with the Marvel effect now too. I mean, having Captain America: Civil War felt like an Avengers movie. So the next Avengers movie is coming out, what, next year? Yeah, and how can they top it? Well, they're going to top it because it's Infinity Wars and more. That could be pretty cool. Ah, Infinity, boom. That, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'll watch it. I'll go see it, but... There's definitely like there's definitely like a like a dying down of of like the hype because well it's, it it's got to just like uh, yeah. just like Chris said it's, it's ever diminishing returns so yeah. after a while you just can't spectacle your way through you know through your entire franchise you're gonna have to have some substance you're gonna have to come down off of it Wolverine or excuse me Logan looks like a, a extreme come down what from, a segue oh you're so the, good I, you know you're so good I'm you're Lord of the Radio that's aren't you? why I'm Lord of the Radio it does friend. look great though Logan looks but see Logan to me looks like a movie. It it looks like it's a it does. It you know does what I mean like as opposed to here's a here's the thing and I can't I can't really go deep deep into it and I want to emphasize or stress that I have no idea what's going on in, in the movie sure it's not a spoiler right but it seems kind of grim to me that's the only thing that's that's kind of like making me a little weary actually like, though have you seen some of the trailers though the newer trailers um, or the newer commercials I should say not the trailers the newer commercials has them rolling up you know and again it's not a spoiler you can it's on TV has them rolling up in a in a demolished limo in Vegas. You know, by the end of it, so there there seems to be a I, I believe seems to be a balance. There's going to be some some humor in it, yeah, but it's going to be heavy. We're going to lose some people. You know, there's going to be there's going to be some. It just seems it just feels weighty. Should like I rev- should I reveal? I don't even remember if I revealed this last week. Don't but reveal. If should I reveal, reveal my anything. my prediction? It's not oh, a spoiler. A it's not a spoiler. Um, but it's it my is, prediction for it's a not plot a spoiler device. unless it's true. Right. In which it, case, it was a spoiler. It could happen, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I think. Well, uh, okay, go ahead. No, but I should. I, I don't no, know. No, go ahead. Say. I think that the Professor X in that movie is all in Wolverine's mind. Oh. I think that's what it's going to be. See? Yeah. Now, again, See, I know not nothing cool. about the movie. How did we get to this, though? How did we get to, to, to run down Logan where they reset the clock uh, in, well, in the... Here's the question, in right? The days of future past. Right. So how did we get to this? That's one of the questions that has ruined, to be answered. Ruined Professor X and ruined right. Logan. But that's the thing, though, right? Like, if Logan all of a sudden is aging, there's either one of two things that happen. One is healing factor stopped working in which real time. Which it probably has. And like, so I now he's kind of, you know, now he's just kind of aging. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brian Everham, Everham actually agrees with me. He thinks that's going to happen also, which is awesome. Um, probably won't happen, but, you know, hey. Um, the or or... It is a long time later because I remember in the comics originally it was like a long, long time. You know, had yeah, passed Logan, like two hundred years. It can't be that passed. long because Professor Xavier is still alive. Exactly, right? and he so was already that's old. Why in 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 real time? Right. So know? I kind of feel as if it has maybe fifty years has passed, and maybe he is starting to age a bit. But I feel like it's well, well past yeah. uh, Professor Xavier being alive. Um, these okay. are my these are my predictions. Sure to go wrong because I I saw a particular scene that made me think that a certain thing was a certain event was going to happen. Okay, and uh, made me, made me feel very strongly like oh, I know I know what's going on right there. Ah. I can't really talk no, about that, it don't either. say that thing because I'm not I'm not basing this on any See what scene I'm saying? that I've See, seen. Now you don't want to hear from me, but no, this is very true. You've inundated me with all your thoughts. Yes, now I got to deal with it. Yes, that's, that's not I know. Cool. I that's know. Not cool. Well, that's 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 what I do. I want to renegotiate this contract. <laughs> There's a contract. Yeah, I know. I didn't even sign one. I'm an idiot. So, I mean, <laughs> I guess, well, next week, first of all, we got a great show because we're going to be, we got Darren Sanchez. He uh, works I over at Marvel, doing some Marvel uh, creative, uh, Marvel custom comics coming on the show. Uh, we're going to be talking all about Logan because 
you know, we, were, we will have seen it by then. Exactly, exactly. In we theory. will we will do a, we will be as spoiler free as possible no, when we, we talk about I'm Logan. Gonna spoil the whole thing. Yeah, you know, it was Sabretooth the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's C three PO. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> he's actually C three PO. It was Los Wolverine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was multiple. It was. It was like a Wolverine plural. Yes, that's that's yeah. what ended up happening. <laughs> it, was, it was the last Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, the last Wolverines. Does it? Yeah, okay, keep moving. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to give you our full-on spoiler-free. Uh, you can actually catch me on um, on, a, on the... Uh, on a, oh, boy. I got I to... Gotta, boy, I was going oh, so man. well. I was oh, going you so doing, well. You, don't think about your keys. Human Echoes Podcast. I'll be on the Human Echoes Podcast talking about Wolverine uh, tomorrow night as well. Oh, not tomorrow night. Friday night. Conflict of interest. No, I'm Why kidding. Why is it a conflict of interest? <laughs> I'm, trying to promote, I'm trying to promote our show. <laughs> trying to get that, trying to get that out there. You're working with the other people. I want to thank Chris Brogan, tremendous guest. Uh, go check out his uh, website, chrisbrogan.com. Uh, check out his Google ID and his Twitter ID. They're all uh, thanks for playing our game, Chris Brogan. Thank you for playing the game. Thank you to all our Facebook um, participants, all our Periscope participants: Dan T. Lawson, a spot of Premier Stark, Jersey Jedi, Brian Everham, Elizabeth McKee, Corin Dango. Oh, see, I got it. Yeah, there. That was well, pretty good. Uh, a little better this time. Was, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, he knows he's got a tough name to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, haunted him his actually, entire yes, he life, does. right? Yes, he does. I can't even go into it, but yeah. He should just he be does. James Q. Yes. Well, he's close to that. I'm trying to get him on the show, too. Not James Quarandango, but oh, um, he'll, he'll be Q morning. from The Practical Jokers. He's a big superhero guy. Okay. I am trying hard okay. to get him as well, all right. too. So we're going we're gonna to have some good stuff. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Check us out on iTunes. The podcast goes up on Fridays. Uh, we're going to be on Stitcher soon. We're going to be on iHeartRadio soon. Go check out the Patreon page, Facebook. Uh, go enjoy Logan. Yeah. And we'll talk yeah. about it next week. All right, cool. <laughs> You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And And welcome welcome to to 21st 21st Century Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. For you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business. And your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at TalkingAlternative.com. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show, Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc.
You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network.